Hello, today I'm going to show you how to build this handsome, practical wall planter. Let's get on with it. Start by measuring the space you have available. Here I wanted the planters to fit between the back door and bathroom window. These planters are going to be made from one 2x4 and around 3 feet of 1.5x2 inches left over from the apple tray builds. Here I'm marking out the shorter lengths for the three trays that come from the 2x4. I chisel to the knife lines to make sawing easier. Sawing into four parts is then very simple with the skew back I bought last week. These lengths now need splitting lengthwise, each into three even thickness pieces. The strips now need cutting to even length, and the end pieces cut to fit. A stop block really helps with repeatable cuts. To make the bottoms of each tray fit properly, you need to subtract the thickness of two ends from the length. Since these are for outdoors, I'm not worrying too much about absolute accuracy here, since the thickness of the cuts was variable. It's worth doing a quick test fit at this stage, just to ensure you're not too far out. This looked pretty good, so I moved on. Planters will hold moist soil, so they need good drainage. Here I'm using a 40mm Forstner bit to cut 6 or 7 holes in the bottoms of each of the trays. They won't be seen in use, so I'm not fussing about neatness here. The cut parts for the trays now need gluing up. I thought of cutting rebates and assembling that way, but since these joints are prone to damage if the wood swells, and since it is going to live outside, instead I chose the expedient route of waterproof glue and brad nails. This was rather fiddlier than anticipated, and I needed a third hand or two. Clamps came to the rescue. Very quickly, these were all assembled. Time to look at the frame. To look its best, the trays need to be evenly spaced. I used offcuts to act as spacers so the trays could be marked up more easily. I made the marks on the wood before splitting in two lengthwise. This ensured they would be level once parted and mounted on the wall. It was then a simple case of cutting the three houses in the batten. I've used the crosscut sled here, but you could make this with a rouser plane just as easily, if more slowly. The batten is then cut lengthwise into two equal pieces. I messed up the measuring, so I had to trim the second part down a little, but no harm done. The frame wants to sit away from the wall, so here I'm cutting riser blocks from 40mm down. The battens and the blocks need drilling so the frame can be secured to the wall. I chose to put these in the housings to make the final appearance a little neater. The drilling for the blocks was slightly trickier, but I got there in the end. Drilling slanted holes to accommodate dowels allows the trays to be neatly held in place. This project requires some prep and I undercoated everything, inside and out, prior to the top coat of exterior grade gloss. This is messy work, especially if, like me, you're a rubbish painter. With undercoat in place, the gloss goes on easily. The blocks need coating too, and I put this little jig together from leftover scraps from the trays. Time for a Fintival! He was being very lively that night. Having measured these to fit, I wanted the trays to sit evenly in the gap. A quick offer up allowed me to mark where the battens needed to go. Using an easy reference point, the drill holes can be started using the battens as templates. I say easy, it was clear the straight line wasn't, and I needed to improvise to make this work. Quick check indicated all looked good at this stage. Pop in some roll plugs. And then fit the test buttons. The blocks will go behind, but we still have four holes to locate and drill. I checked for level again, and they were not. Test fitting the second tray showed this wasn't visible to the naked eye, so I went with it. The battens need to be vertical, so I marked for this. That offcut was how I first measured the distance between the battens in assembly. It didn't fit this time, but turned out to not be much of an issue. 
With the riser blocks in place, the battens can be screwed down firmly. These feel rock solid. The trays can then be tapped home in the housings and the dowels inserted to secure them in place. It's a bit fiddly, but it's not difficult. After a final coat of gloss on the surface is not yet finished and some attention to those areas needing touch up, we're done. So there we have it, a handsome, practical, useful wall planter that I'll be planting up as soon as the paint dries and unfortunately it hasn't had time to do that yet but as soon as it does I'll be planting it with a mix of bulbs and flowers for a splash of early spring colour. Thanks for watching, please like, subscribe and comment and if you do comment I will reply. That's all for now, bye bye.